Hey friends, welcome to Sabbath School Daily, where we have been studying from this lesson right here, Three Cosmic Messages. This week we have been studying from lesson number six, which has the title, The Hour of His Judgment. And today is Wednesday's lesson, which has the title, The Messiah Cut Off. Today's lesson is uh, a continuation of yesterday's lesson, where we were talking about Daniel chapter nine in the context of Daniel chapter eight. So the, the vision of 490 years mentioned in Daniel chapter nine, verse 24 and 25, being the first portion of the larger vision that appears in Daniel chapter 8, verse 14. If you missed that, if you don't really know what I'm talking about, go back to yesterday's lesson, which is where we really got into it, and you'll see what we're talking about. But as I said yesterday, Daniel's vision in chapter 9, it's broken down or it's, it's, it's cut down into a few different periods of time. Perhaps the most significant to the Jews living in Daniel's day is the first portion where they were promised that they would be allowed to go back to Jerusalem. And what you find is that in Daniel chapter 9, verse 24 and 25, God really provides them all they need to know to look forward to that, to the fact they would go back to Jerusalem and that it would be rebuilt. In Daniel chapter 4, uh, sorry, Daniel chapter 9, verse 24, what you find is 70 weeks are determined for your people. Remember the word determined is the Hebrew word tatak. It's a very specific word, means cut off. This is a vision that is being cut off or it's a period of time, sorry, not a vision, a period of time that is being cut off from the larger time vision in Daniel chapter eight. 70 weeks are determined for your people and for your holy city. And then in, in verse 25, you find, know therefore and understand that from the going forth of the command to restore and rebuild Jerusalem until Messiah, the prince. So what you find here is a beginning date, right? If, you know, if they keep their eyes open, if they are aware of, of history, of, of you know, their, their history right there, they could understand when an order would be given for them to go back to Jerusalem. And that would be the kickoff date, right? The starting date of when they could start counting the 490 years until Jesus. The problem with that, at least for us today, looking with hindsight, is that three orders were given, not just one. So if you look back in the year 538, King Cyrus he gave an order for the Jews to return to Jerusalem. Problem with that is that Cyrus had a son called Cambyses. And Cambyses was an extremely religious uh, man, you know, but not biblical religion, pagan religion. And he really disliked the Israelites and he did not want them to go back to Israel or to worship their God. And so he did everything in his power to get in the way and to, to make it impossible for uh, his father's decree to be fulfilled. And so what you find is that that order it wasn't really carried out because of Cambyses. And if you like to know more about history, if you want to know more about this, just look into the history books. You're going to find a lot there. It's super interesting. Um, a little bit more about this is, is mentioned in Daniel chapter 11. But the second order was given by King Darius I. And it's more of a confirmation of King Cyrus's, uh, King Cyrus's order a few, years a few years before. This one happens in the year 519 or 519 B.C., and this order was, again, partially fulfilled. I mean, they, a lot of, of Jews did go back to, to Jerusalem, but they encountered so many obstacles coming from the surrounding nations that they weren't really able to rebuild anything. And so um, years later, in the year 457, finally an order was given that was fulfilled. And this was the order given by King Artaxerxes. And so this happened in the autumn of 457. The Jews went back. If you want to read more about this, just read Ezra chapter 7. You can read the book of Nehemiah. You'll see that all of these things are happening in that period of time. And they return and they indeed rebuild and restore Jerusalem. And so from that moment, you find the continuation of the prophecy here in Daniel chapter uh, 9, verse 26. So what you find here is after 62 weeks, um, actually, let's go before that in verse 25. Know therefore and understand that from going, uh, the going forth of the command to restore and rebuild Jerusalem until Messiah, the prince, there shall be seven weeks and 62 weeks. What does that mean? Seven weeks and 62 weeks. So why is the Bible talking this way? Well, this is just the way that the Israelites would count time. Um, if you remember, for, I'll, I'll give you an example of this in, in something more that is more relatable to us, especially if, we're, you know, if you're here in the United States. If you remember Abraham Lincoln in his great discourse, um, he, uh, in his, um, yeah, in, in one of his big um, discourses, he says that, you know, four score and seven years ago, our, our forefathers. So what is he talking about four score and seven years ago? Why does he say it that way? Well, a score in English is 20 years. And no one really calls it like that anymore, right? We just say 20 years. But, you know, in those olden days, 
it would call 20 years a score of time. It's kind of like how we use a century or a decade or a millennia. A score would be 20 years. And so 87 years before is the period of time that he's talking about, right? Four score, that's 80 years. And then seven, 87. So in a similar way here, you have uh, seven weeks and 69 weeks, right? Sorry, um, what you find here is uh, seven weeks and 62 weeks. I think that's what I said. <laughs> seven weeks and 62 weeks. So if you take that, that comes out to 483 years, right? And so the Messiah would come. So what happened 483 years after 457? You come out to the year 27 AD, which is when we know that Jesus was baptized. So what's incredible here is that you have Daniel um, in vision pinpointing the exact year in which Jesus would be baptized. And then the vision, um, not the vision, the, the continuation of Gabriel's explanation goes on. And after 62 weeks, the Messiah shall be cut off, but not for himself. So this is talking about the, uh, the crucifixion of Jesus. Um, so that's where it says, but not for himself, right? Jesus didn't die for himself, but for his people. And the people of Prince would come. He shall destroy the city and the sanctuary. So what you have is 69 weeks, right? A, uh, 483 years. And then the last week that you have is what's being mentioned here in the continuation is that in the middle of that year, in um, that week, in the year 31 is when Jesus dies, right? So that's the, these are the prophecies of which Daniel chapter 9 is talking about. It's really an in-depth explanation into the smaller time prophecy of Daniel chapter 9, verse 24 through 27 of 490 years. And the reason why that's relevant is is that that is the first portion of the larger prophecy of Daniel chapter 8 of 2,300 years. So for Seventh-day Adventists, this is an extremely significant portion of the Bible because this here, it's not only speaking about you know, the, the restoration of Jerusalem, it's not only prophesying the, the anointing of Jesus, the, the baptism of Jesus, it's not only talking about the, um, the death of Jesus is not only talking about the resurrection of Jesus, about the death of the first Christian martyr um, with, uh, with Stephen, but this is how we understand 1844, which is extremely significant to us Adventists. We're going to be talking about that in tomorrow's lesson, so don't miss out. I hope that this lesson today, look, I know that it's kind of confusing. I know it is, right? You're talking about years, and uh, sometimes when... I remember when I heard this for the first time and I heard the explanation, it's like, what is this guy talking about? It's like, a, it's like a crazy scientist kind of thing, you know, that mad scientist. Well, you have 490 years and 483 years and you have the year 27 and 31 and 33 and this, then that and 457. It just, it seems so confusing. But if you just lay it out, I think that a better way, an easier way for you to do this is if you just get a sheet of paper, put down, you know, you got 2,300 years. It's a longer you know, timeline, and then you get the first portion, which is 490 years, and then you put that there in that first part, right? It's the first part that was cut off, and then you write down the year 457, which is where Artaxerxes, he gave the order that allowed them to go back finally and restore Jerusalem, and then you get 483 years that comes out to 27, which is when Jesus was anointed, right? He was baptized, and you get him being cut off in the middle of the last week, right? The 70th week, because you had 62 plus seven weeks, right? It's the whole four score thing. Remember that? So it just becomes a lot easier if you put it out, at least for me, I'm more of a visual person, but I know that this is a little bit confusing, especially if you're just coming into this. Don't allow yourself to become, um, you know, just, uh, um, what's the word that I'm looking for? It's, um, um, oh man, it's not going to come to me right now, but don't, don't get discouraged, you know, intimidated. Don't get intimidated by this, right? It, it might seem to just, you know, just go over your head. Don't become intimidated by this. This is, this is one of the more, more, more deeper aspects of biblical prophecy. You'll get there, right? If you're new to this, if you're just coming in, don't become intimidated by this. Study the basics, right? Just have, just acknowledge that this is a thing. You'll get to it later. If you are a, a more experienced Christian, if you have been here for a while and you, you want the deeper stuff, then this is a good place to, uh, I don't know if to begin, but it's a good thing to study, right? You're going to get on to more complicated. Trust me, this is not the hardest part yet. You know, when you get to Daniel chapter 11, that's where it really gets kind of crazy. But what that reveals to me, right? What's the point of all this? It's God revealing that, first of all, he is a transparent God. He doesn't want us to be confused. He doesn't want us to be afraid. He doesn't want us to think that he's just given up on us. God is really revealing that he is in control. He is at the helm of history. That's the first thing. The second thing that we find with these prophecies is that God is an extremely detail-oriented being. 
God is not the God that just, eh, it doesn't matter, just do whatever. No, God cares about details, right? So um, to me, these two things, God is in control. Things are not lost. Things are not just abandoned. The universe isn't just abandoned. Um, and God is a detail-oriented being. So study this with calm, with patience, be patient with yourself, be patient with the Bible, be a diligent student of uh, history of the Bible, allow the Bible to interpret itself. I'm sure that this will, um, this will over time uh, become clearer and clearer to a point where you're going to be able to very calmly and carefully explain this to someone else. Again, remember, biblical prophecy, to me at least, is one of the portions of the Bible or one of the categories of the Bible where you don't need that much faith. Because it's right there. It's in your face. All you have to do is read the text, have a little bit of clarity of thought to, well, what is this talking about? Where have I seen this before? And then you go to history and you just compare it. I mean, history, it's not the Bible. History tells us that there were three declarations. History tells us that, um, you know, about when the Jews went back to Jerusalem. History tells us uh, when these, all of these things happen. And so you don't need that much faith. All you have to do is have an open, clear mind, study this, allow the text to speak for itself. I'm sure that God will help you along the way. Please remember to study your lesson. Look up the Bible verses in the texts. Fill them out. That will confirm the information in your mind. Please also remember to like, to share, and to subscribe to our videos. We release one every day. And I hope to see you again here tomorrow for another study of Sab School Daily.